if an airline isn't comfortable with forward futures or swaps contracts, it has several other options to hedge jet fuel prices. One of the most common is the call option. In this case, the option holder has the right to buy a commodity at a specific strike price through the maturity date of the option. Let's look at how an airline would use call options. In this example, the date's January 1st, 2006, and the current price of jet fuel is $2.50 per gallon. The airline thinks prices may rise, so it will buy an option to purchase 10,000 gallons of fuel for $2.70. Now this is greater than the current market price, but the airline has the right to exercise this option all the way through January 1st, 2008. That means that if at any point in that time period the price rises above $2.70, the airline can exercise its option and buy 10,000 gallons of jet fuel at a price below market value. Even though the airline will exercise the option if fuel prices rise above $2.70, since the option itself cost $1,000, the price would actually have to increase by 10 cents per gallon more, up to $2.80, for the airline to post a hedging gain. That means that at any price above $2.80, the airline is paying less than market value for jet fuel, even if you include the price of the option. Essentially, call options allow the airline to pay a premium to have a fixed ceiling for the price it can pay for jet fuel or another commodity acting as a proxy. Since there's always a liquidity concern with jet fuel, cross-market hedges are used with crude oil and other commodities like we talked about with forwards, futures, and swaps. The main downside to call options is that they're relatively expensive. Option prices depend on the value of the underlying commodity, the volatility of the commodity's price, and the time to maturity of the option. Therefore, if you have an option with an extremely long maturity time, say five years, and an extremely volatile underlying commodity like oil, the option itself will be very expensive. So as the price of the option increases, so does the increase in the price of the commodity that needs to occur for the hedge to be profitable. That means that call options are very effective in setting price ceilings but their expense makes them a little bit less attractive than the last option we'll discuss, which are collars. Since call options alone are expensive, airlines will often construct collars, which consists of the purchase of a call option and the sale of a put option. When you combine a call with the sale of a put, you effectively create a ceiling and a floor that the airline will pay for jet fuel or the proxy commodity. This reduces the overall expense because the airline will receive a premium for selling the put option. In return for selling the put, however, the airline does put a floor on what it can pay. That makes it a little more risky than call options because if prices drop below the put, the airline is going to lose money on the hedge. So let's look at an example of collars because they're a little complicated and difficult to understand. In this example, the airline is going to construct a collar to protect itself against rising jet fuel prices for little or no cost. The first step when you construct a collar is to purchase the call that we talked about earlier. So if jet fuel prices today are $3.60, the airline might pay $1,000 to buy a call option with a strike price of $3.75. That means the airline will never pay more than $3.75 for jet fuel, even if the price rises well above that. However, to finance this purchase, it will also sell a put, which basically sets a price floor to go along with the price ceiling. The airline receives a premium for selling the put, but takes on the risk that the price of the commodity will drop below the strike price. So in this case, if jet fuel costs $3.60, the airline would sell a put with a strike price of $3.45 and receive $1,000 in premium. This means that the airline has set a ceiling of 
and a floor of 345. Now, the advantage of the ceiling is obvious. However, if the price of jet fuel drops below 345, the airline has to pay the holder of the put option the difference if they exercise that option. The put option can be a little bit confusing, so let's look at it in a bit more detail. In the example, the strike price was $3.45. Let's say at the maturity of the option, the price of jet fuel was $3, and the quantity that we had in the option was for 1,000 gallons of fuel. That means that the airline would be able to purchase fuel at $3 per gallon. It would do that. So let's say the airline bought 1,000 gallons at $3 per barrel. The airline would pay $3,000 for its fuel. However, since the airline sold a put option, it's liable for the difference in the strike price and the spot price for fuel at maturity. So $3.45 minus $3 is 45 cents per gallon. Since the contract was for a thousand gallons, that means the airline owes $450 to settle the put option. Therefore, if you add all that up, the airline has spent a total of $3,450, or an average cost per barrel of $3.45. In this example, it shows how a collar will essentially set a floor and a ceiling for the airline's hedging activities. The advantages for collars are actually pretty obvious. It sets a definite price ceiling that the airline will pay, and it also sets a floor. However, with the floor comes potential for problems if the price of fuel decreases dramatically. If this happens, the airline will be stuck paying a higher price than it would have been paying on the open market. Now it's also possible to adjust collars depending on the level of risk tolerance the company has. You can create premium collars, which provide you greater protection from price increases by selling put options that are of less value. So for example, you could purchase a call option for a value closer to the current market price and sell a put option much farther below the current market price and receive less premium. Essentially, you can use collar options to determine your own level of risk tolerance. You can set the floor or ceiling and have a steady band of prices in which you'll know jet fuel will fall for the duration of the collar contracts. Now that we've seen how airlines can hedge fuel prices, let's look at what they're doing in practice. As of now, most airlines operate unhedged for two main reasons. First, for airlines with low credit profiles, hedging is a very cash-intensive activity. Counterparties aren't willing to enter into hedging transactions with airlines without them putting up substantial cash since there's a risk of default. However, most legacy carriers need this cash as a barrier against bankruptcy. Airlines are so cash poor that they've had to tap into their own pensions to have enough operating cash to stay out of bankruptcy. Secondly, hedging only prevents future price increases from hurting your airline. If you start your hedging activities at a market high, you can end up with substantial losses. Delta experienced this in 2006, when it lost over $100 million with bad hedges. After bankruptcy, Delta started a new hedging program, but after September 11th, oil prices dropped dramatically. Since Delta entered their hedging program at a market high, they saw substantial losses. We see the same thing today. With the market at historically high levels, it might not make sense for airlines to begin hedging programs right now.